to congratulate Canadians at the light at the end of the tunnel. The day has finally come after months and months of heckling. These politicians are starting to snap. We're talking about Jagmeet Singh here today. Welcome back to Moose and Loose. My name's David. Today's top story is Jagmeet Singh absolutely snaps on a heckler. We've also got some House of Commons clips here where Trudeau's ministers are getting pretty spicy and snappy in there. They continually get owned. So let's check this out. First off, the clip with Jagmeet here. It's posted on a Canadian Free Living YouTube channel. Go give them a follow. So they're following Jagmeet and the guy here in the blue shirt he's trying to ask Jagmeet whether he'll support a motion to basically um, call an election and this other guy is recording you don't see who says what but check it out corrupted B word you got something to say? I didn't say thing? corrupted bastard, but Is I that said, what you said? No, no, I did not who say said that. It? Was it somebody, who said it? Somebody behind said me it? said that. Was it me? Was it you? No. You sure? If it was me, I'd admit it, buddy. Was it you or not? If it was me, I'd admit it. What'd you say then? I didn't say nothing. It wasn't me. It was a gentleman behind me, I guess. Who is it then? Point it out. I have no idea who it was, buddy. My word. You sure it's not you? No. 100%. You're a coward. You're not going to say it to my face. That's what's thought. Say what? You didn't if I said something face. like that to you, I'd admit it. <laughs> All right. Now, I, I asked you if a confidence vote came up to you. With that aggression, is that why you're choosing war with Russia? <laughs> well, you talk about the corrupted bastard comment, but you won't Is that why you won't go for peace? Wow. Wow, Jagmeet, he's losing his cool there. Th this is a leader? A leader of a party? Are you kidding me? Look at this guy. Wagging his finger like, come on, Jagmeet. This is embarrassing. You want to see NDP's numbers drop? Here you go just with a move like this. You know, the big difference between Pierre Polyev and all the other leaders here is Pierre Polyev is cool as a cucumber. He's been getting dragged through the mud, all the news media, CBC, CTV, in the House of Commons. He gets everything flung at him and he is just strong and confident. He can take whatever is dished out to him. That's what we need in a leader. You, need, you don't want someone who makes their decisions in life when they're in the heat of the moment, when they let their temper and their emotions control what they do. That's the kind of person who gets kind of crazy and then goes pushes the, uh, the uh, send missile button. But Jagmeet here, I mean, this is embarrassing. Who is it then? Point it I out. have no idea who it was, buddy. My word, you sure it's not you? No. Okay, I think it was this guy, but if you listen to the audio, the voice sounds like it's echoing off of this back wall and coming back, which means it has to be from this guy. And if you listen to it a few times, it does sound like it, it's his voice. But I mean, either way, he's allowed to call him a corrupted uh, B word. Corrupted bastard. You say something, you want a piece of this? <laughs> you got something to say? Is that what you said? No, no, I did not say that. Who said it? Somebody behind said me said it? that. Was it me? Was it you? No. <laughs> sure. If it was me, I'd... Oh, come on, Jagmeet. Are you really going to do something? Are you going to smack him? Like, this guy's got all the security. Look at the... <laughs> look at this guy's face. He's like, is this guy really doing this? Was it you or not? If it was me, I'd admit it. What'd you say then? I didn't say nothing. It wasn't me. It was a gentleman behind me, I guess. Who is it then? Point it I out. I have no idea who it was, buddy. My word. You sure it's not you? No. 100%. Are you sure it's not you? No. I don't know. So the guy you can see here too also kind of goes behind this guy. He's trying to hide. That's what that is. Like a turtle trying to go into a shell. He should have just said it again to his face. Call him a corrupted B word right to his face. What's Jagmeet going to do? Slap him in the face? Hit him? Then he just press charges. Whether that guy said it or not, he should have just said it right to his face. A confidence vote came up too. Yeah. With that aggression, is that why you're... Look at that. He asked him about non-confidence. He's like, ah, get out of here. I don't care about that. My pension's number one. Jagmeet is an absolute loser. This is an absolute bear embarrassment to watch for to be a, the leader of a party and act like that let his emotions control his <laughs> it's so bad let's jump over the house now we've got a couple back and forths here with some pretty spicy um liberals getting a little bit testy speaker uh, this uh, incompetent finance minister would tell you that you should celebrate that after prices rising faster than at any time in 40 years, they continue to rise, just not as quickly. I'm sure the people living in tent encampments or the record-smashing two million people lined up at food banks or the one in four kids going to school hungry after nine years of this government will be celebrating. But what we now find out is that it's worse than we thought. According to a document just released, the government's second carbon tax will cost 
Nine billion dollars yeah. in lost GDP. Why won't we have a carbon tax election to decide? Yeah. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I think we all know why the Conservatives are so panicked about an election. <laughs> it's because they can see that the economic news is good. They can see that we are now back to exactly where we were before COVID hit. They can see the Bank what? of Canada has lowered interest rates three times in a row. Is she absolutely nuts? She, they're down like 25 points in the polls. The cost of food is through the roof. Nothing has changed. The things are just getting more expensive. And wages have been ahead of inflation for 19 months. That's good news for Canadians. It's bad news for yeah. conservatives. Weak. The bad news is we now have 1,800 homeless encampments in Ontario. Shame. 35 in Halifax alone. Two 1,800 in Ontario. 1,800 encampments, not 1,800 tents. This is outrageous. Million Canadians lined up at food banks after nine years of NDP Liberal government. And now that we learn that on top of the $25 billion annual hit of the first carbon tax to our GDP, the second carbon tax will subtract another $9 billion a year. Over $35 billion in, high, in lost GDP, that's almost $2,000 per family. Why won't this costly NDP Liberal government allow Canadians to vote on the carbon tax? Mr. Speaker, I am so glad to have the chance to talk about housing because there is more good news Canadians should know about. And that is that we have extended to 30 years amortizations for all first-time home buyers. That means more young Canadians and afford that mortgage. I mentioned this yesterday. This is regressing in policy. It's embarrassing that they've had to do that. We've extended to 30 years amortizations for all new homes. That's to encourage what we know we all need. More homes built faster. But these weak and spiteful Conservatives cannot celebrate good news for Canadians because it's bad news for their partisan interests. Yes. We used to have 40-year amortizations. 40. Then it went to 35 then 30, then 25. <laughs> now we're going backwards because of their policies are so bad. A member for Burnaby South. The Liberals are, have let people down again and again, and they are done. It's clear from the results of the election last night, the Liberals are done. Maybe it's because they keep on teaming up with the Conservatives to let greedy CEOs continue to rip off Canadians. In fact, inflation numbers show that grocery greed has driven up the food, the food prices, more than 21% in the past three years. Easy, Jagme. Don't beat us up, big guy. <laughs> Why did the Liberals team up with the Conservatives to protect greedy CEOs from a price cap on food essentials? <laughs> He's a one-trick pony. He literally brings up one thing, and that's it. For the past, I spent him over a year. It's, that's all he talks about is just the grocery prices. But he doesn't do anything, and his brother is supporting it. Mr. Speaker, I hope the NDP, and indeed all members of this House, will set partisanship aside for one moment to congratulate Canadians at the light at the end of the tunnel, at the fact which light are you talking about? The, are we talking about made? What, what, what light? Aftermath, inflation is back to where it was before COVID first hit. When it comes to taxes, we believe that those who have the most capacity should pay their fair share, and we've acted on that. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. The Liberals have continued to team up with the Conservatives to let grocery greed drive up the price of food, and that's got to stop. Yeah, les gens Okay, so he just goes into great poupon, but it's kind of funny what she says afterwards. I think anybody listening to Question Period today, or frankly, any day, imagines that the Liberals are teaming up with the Conservatives. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, Speaker, after nine years of this NDP Liberal government, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up, and time is up. This Prime Minister's new de facto finance minister, Carbon Tax Carney, has massive conflicts of interest, including multiple foreign investment firms. Canadians don't know how much he personally stands to profit from the advice that he's giving to the Prime Minister. It's more blatant corruption from this NDP Liberal government. So will the Prime Minister simply have Carbon Tax Carney sworn in as a public office holder so that the full extent of Canada's disclosure laws apply to him too? It's absolutely appalling that someone can be advising the government and then be profiting off of the advice they give to the government. And considering Justin Trudeau is essentially extended family with Mark Carbon Tax Carney, Mark Carney is the godfather to Christia Freeland's kids. They're also wound up together. Obviously, they're just going to try to make as much money from this as possible and send it to some offshore account and divvy up the the rewards afterwards. Mr. Speaker, unlike the Conservatives, we do believe in listening to experts from across yes. the country. But let's talk about where the Conservatives get their ideas. The Conservative leader gets his advice on helping Canadians with their grocery bills from a Loblaws lobbyist. He gets his advice on Ukraine from Elon Musk and from Tucker Carlson. And he has of misogynists and cozied up to the far right. Those are the advisors Canadians should be really concerned about. Maybe we should be concerned with Mark Carney just met from the guy from uh, Telesat, this light speed satellite that you guys just gave $2 billion to. <laughs> she mentions Elon Musk. It's like, there's a big conflict of interest right there. It's absolutely absurd to hear the finance minister give anyone lessons about who they're taking advice from. Arch liberal elitist Mark Carney. This guy has more conflicts than the twice guilty and convicted prime minister of their party. And they're letting carbon tax Carney keep all the money and all the power by covering up his massive conflicts of interest while giving away that finance minister's job. He makes millions from foreign investment firms, and now he's advising the Prime Minister. So why is the Prime Minister letting Carbon Tax Carney keep the money and the power and serving as the real finance minister? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, it's absolutely shameful what the Conservatives are doing. When there is a oh, we're not listening to this garbage. She's come back after having a baby and all. She's, she's just doing this high and mighty like, oh, we're so righteous and you guys are so bad. And she keeps saying it's disgraceful when really 1,800 encampments, tent encampments in Ontario alone. You want to talk disgraceful, why don't you do something about it? We got a conservative here that really digs in and it hits a nerve of uh, Trudeau's uh, ministers of families. And we actually get some emotion out of her for, for like the first time ever. Canadians cannot afford any more media stunts from this costly coalition. Will the prime minister just end the suffering and call a carbon tax election? Yeah. As we've just returned from the summer break, to take a moment to talk about the programs that the Conservative government professes to want to cut. Over the summer, we've made a number of announcements on new affordable $10 a day childcare spots. Oh, look at this, 600 new spots in BC, wow. 950 new spots in Manitoba. Oh, here we are, 5,000 new spots over the next year in Saskatchewan, Mr. Speaker. And what do the Conservatives say? No more affordable childcare. So arrogant. <laughs> Let's look at the numbers here, Genocides. We want to talk numbers. Oh, look at this. It's 1.6 million Canadian families have a child that's under the age of six. Just over half, 56 percent of children zero to five were in licensed or unlicensed childcare in Canada. We can simply do the math here. This isn't good for you, genocides. Maybe you shouldn't be so arrogant. So bringing over my trusty calculator, we got 1.6 million families multiplied by 56 percent. That's 896,000 families that need childcare. So we can minus the 5,000 she just stated. We can minus the 600. We can minus whatever, minus another 100,000. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So I can't find out exactly how many spots, but it says right here that they added uh, 13,000 through 2022-23 alone. Say they have 50,000. Say they even have 100,000. 
spots like I just minused off of here, we would still be short 800,000 child care spots. So why is she being so smug with her 5,000 here and 600 there when clearly this is a major failure to most of the families in Canada? It's a big slap in the face to all of these people who don't get those spots who need those spots thus just get rid of the program and make it cheaper for everyone stop spending so much money and jacking the inflation rate finally we got one last uh, interaction here with raquel dancho she's back in here and um yeah check this out up under their watch women and children are being victimized and violated by criminals that under liberal policies are being let out on bail house arrest and parole and after nine years the results are truly terrible mr speaker sexual assaults for example are up 75 percent and sexual violations against children are up 120 percent under their watch mr speaker when will the liberals put the needs of the victims first and ensure jail not bail for repeat violent offenders the Honourable Minister Listen of to this. And Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, we take community safety extremely seriously. It is my top priority. What we have done since I've taken office is we've increased the penalties on people who would target individuals, including tar people who target people's automobiles. We have funded police to the tune of $161 million to assist them in their important work. What I we've increased the amount of T-word people in our country. We've increased the amount of carjackings, the home invasions. We've increased it all. Just check out what he says next here. I can advise the member opposite is three important things. The people who are making decisions on bail are provincially appointed justices of the peace or provincial judges. The people who decide to appeal decisions on bail are provincial crown attorneys. And the people who decide whether offenders have a place to go when they're denied bail, those are provincial correctional facilities. Talk to the provinces. Ooh. He just blamed all of the crime in Canada on the provinces after they changed the laws to make it hard for the judges to put them in jail. They have this stupid bail program, which falls directly on these guys, and they're bringing in the worst of the worst people, and they just blame the provinces for it. Like, you can't make this stuff up. Between the liberal den of thieves and Jagmeat, aka Knuckles, <laughs> we have to give him a, a street name now. <laughs> Our country is run by just the stupidest people ever, and it's becoming embarrassing. Just some of these clips, I wouldn't be surprised if this Jagmeat one just blows up around the world, because it's embarrassing. The question now is how much longer will we go before we get another embarrassing clip like this?